Hello everyone, welcome back to another MCR 3U1 video, and in this video we will be going over section 3.6 on the zeros of a quadratic function. Here's the review outline um, that will come up in a second. Um, we want to uh, learn uh, connecting functions to their graphs. We want to use the discriminant to find the number of zeros of a quadratic equation. Um, we, want to, we want to look at quadratic functions with only one zero, and we want to solve problems using the discriminant, and then at the end, we'll go over a quick summary. Let's go right into our first example. In this example, we're going to use we're going to use the properties of a quadratic function to connect this quadratic equation to its graph. So we want to see if they match, and how can we do that? Well, we do a few things. We can find the vertex to see if it matches, and we can find the zero, which is actually at the vertex, to also see if it matches. So what we want to do is either factor this into its uh, into its uh, zeros uh, to find the zeros, or fa or factor it into its vertex form. Um, what we'll do is uh, factor it into its zeros and then find the vertex from there. So uh, to factor, we uh, we want to complete the square. So we want to uh, factor out a three. From these two terms, a negative 3 actually, we get left with an x squared minus 4x minus 12. Then we want to um, we want to divide this negative 4 by 2 and then square it to find the last term of this perfect square that we want, which if we uh, divide by 2, we get negative 2. And if we square that, we get 4. So here is going to be our perfect square trinomial. But since we add a 4, we also need to subtract a 4 because we can't just change the equation like that. Okay, and then the negative 12, if we keep going, we can get, uh, we can uh, take out this negative 4 from inside the brackets because we can just uh, use distributive property to di just distribute that negative 3 just into the negative 4. So we can take it out the brackets. So we get left with a negative 3x squared minus 4x plus 4. And negative 3 times negative 4 will give us positive 12 minus 12. These 12s are going to cancel out. And inside the brackets, we have a perfect squared trinomial. So if we factor it, we get x minus 2 all squared. Because this negative 2 adds to ne uh, negative 2 plus negative 2 adds to negative 4. And negative 2 times negative 2 equals positive 4. Okay, so this is the equation um, in vertex form of our quadratic function. And now we can see that we we have the vertex at uh, at sorry at v2, right? Because this is our x coordinate, and at zero, because we ha have no no number at the end of our equation. So that just means that we're at y equals zero. And that is indeed where our graph vertex is at, right here at 2, 0. So that's how we can connect that equation to our graph. Now, if we want to find the zeros, I'll put the vertex up here. If we want to find the zeros, we can actually just use this vertex form because um, it's, fa it's factored in a way where we can find the zeros. Because the zeros is when our y value is 0. And we have to find the x value that makes this y value of zero. Okay? But since we are basically multiplying everything on the right side, if we find the x value that makes this brackets zero, then it'll, it'll make the whole right side zero. So if we just find an x value that makes x minus two equal to zero, we can find what value makes the equation equal to zero, makes f of x equals to zero. And so if we want to find x minus 2 equals to 0, what x value makes this um, x minus 2 equal to 0? Well, if we add 2 on each side, we get that x equals 2. That's going to be our only 0 of this function. And indeed, we can see that the graph only touches the x-axis at x equals 2. And we only have one 0. And we can also see that the function uh, opens downwards, which is indicated by this negative k value over here. And those are just some ways that we can match our equation up to our graph. Okay, so moving on to uh, connecting functions to the graph part two. 
and this is using the quadratic formula. This is where we're going to learn the discriminant, which determines the nature of the roots or the number of roots in a quadratic equation, meaning the number of zeros that the, um, the uh, quadratic has, or also the amount of times it intercepts the x-axis, so the x-intercepts. How do we find this discriminant? Well, the discriminant is actually just b squared minus 4ac, which is just a section of our quadratic formula, this section right here inside the square root. And what does the, does the discriminant tell us? Well, if the discriminant is greater than zero, if we use our numbers from our quadratic equation, our a, b, and c values, right, in our standard form of ax squared plus bx plus c, right, if we plug in these values into our discriminant, um, we get a value. If this value is greater than zero, then we have two roots. If this value is exactly zero, we only have one root, meaning only one x-intercept. So here's two x-intercepts, here's one x-intercept. And if our value is equal to less than zero, so if it's negative, then we have no roots, meaning no x-intercepts. Why does this happen? Well, this is because if we take a look at our quadratic equation, this portion of our quadratic equation is right under the square root before the plus or minus sign. So if our discriminant, if this value inside the square root is greater than zero, it's positive, we're gonna get a root of a number and we're gonna end up with negative b plus or minus the square root of our discriminant. And since we have this plus or minus, we have two options for our x value, meaning we're gonna get two different answers. So that's why we're gonna have two different roots, two solutions to our, to, our, um, to our quadratic equation. If the discriminant equals exactly zero, we're gonna end up with a zero inside the square root. So we're just gonna have square root of zero, which is just zero. So we're really just gonna end up with, if this is zero, we're gonna end up with, if this is zero, we're gonna end up with x equals negative b over 2a. Because that plus or minus sign really has um, no effect on our answer because the square root is just zero. So if you add or subtract zero, the answer is just gonna stay the same. So our only answer in this case, if the discriminant is equal to zero, it's just gonna be negative b over 2a. Now, if the discriminant is less than zero, then we're gonna end up with a negative number inside the square root, which cannot happen. We cannot have a negative number inside a square root or an even number root. So we we're gonna have no solution. Okay, so let's move on into some examples using the discriminant. And here it says, find the value of the discriminant to determine the number of zeros for each quadratic function. And each function is drawn here on the right so we can sh check our answers, okay? So we just wanna find out how many roots each of these functions have. So these are already in ax squared plus b in standard form. So all we wanna do um, is figure out our a value, just in this case, it is negative two. Our b value is five, and our c value is negative two. So our discriminant is going to equal b squared minus four ac. Remember that portion under the square root of the quadratic equation. If we just uh, sub in our numbers, b is five, so we're going to have five squared minus four, negative two, and negative two. That's going to give us 25 minus 8 times 2 is 16. That's going to give us 9. Meaning, our discriminant is going to be greater than 0. Therefore, we're going to have um, two zeros. And if we check our graph, we indeed have two x-intercepts right in here. So our answer is correct. The discriminant does give us does tell us that we're gonna have uh, two solutions to this quadratic equation. Okay, so moving on. For b, a is gonna be four, b is gonna be negative three, c is gonna equal two. So if we use the discriminant again, equals b squared minus four ac, then discriminant is gonna equal b, which is negative three squared minus four, a is four, c is two. So we're gonna end up with nine 
minus 4 times 4 is 16, times 2 is 32. So the discriminant is going to equal um, 9 minus 32 is simply going to be negative 23. So in this case, our discriminant is less than 0. Therefore, we're going to have no solution or no zeros. And if we take a look at our graph, we indeed do not touch the x-axis. The x-axis is down here. And our graph starts above the x-axis at, uh, at its vertex and continues going up. So it's never going to touch the x-axis. We're going to have no solutions. And our last example here, A is going to be equal to 2, B is going to be equal to 4, C is going to be equal to 2. OK, so if we plug this into our discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. B is going to be 4 squared minus 4ac. And we're going to get 16 minus 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So our discriminant is going to be 0. And so if our discriminant is equal to 0, we're going to have 1, 0, 1 x-intercept. And if we look at our graph, we indeed just touch the x-axis once with our graph right at the vertex. So if our discriminant is 0, the our parabola is going to touch the x-axis exactly at its vertex because if it were to touch the x-axis anywhere else we would have two x-intercepts the only place it can touch the x-axis and have only one solution is at its vertex so remember if the, your discriminant is zero your parabola its vertex starts right at the uh, the x-axis okay and one last problem here it says a market researcher predicted that the profit function for the first year of a new business would be px equals negative 0.5x squared plus 2x minus 7, where x is based on the number of items sold. And the question asks, will it be possible to break even in its first year? If it's asking us uh, if it's possible to break even, this means that we will have no profit. So our revenue will equal our cost. In the sense of this new business, we will earn just as much as we spent, so our profit will be zero. So it says, will it be possible to break even first year? Meaning it's asking you if P X of X is zero, is there an X value to make this equation true, to make P X equal to zero? And what we can do is actually use our discriminant to see if this function will have any zeros, will, if, it's, if its graph will actually pass the X axis, or in this case down, because we have a negative A value, so we're gonna open downwards. So to do that, we simply just use the discriminant to see if the break even is possible in its first year, if there's an x value to make p of x equal to 0. So if we take our a, b, and c values, our a value is 0 point, negative 0 0.5, our b value is 2, and our c value is negative 7. If you plug this into our discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, then B is going to be 2 minus 4, negative 0 0.5 times negative 7. We're going to have 4 um, minus 4 times 0, 0, uh, negative 0 0.5 is going to be 2 times 7 is going to be 14, which is going to give us negative 10. And so if we have a negative discriminant, what does that mean? Or a discriminant less than 0. This means that we're going to have no zeros. Now, what does this mean for a question? Therefore, it will not be possible to break even in its first year. Because this equation will have no solutions as uh, px equals 0. We will have no zeros. And even if we factor this um, or we find we try to find the zeros, we will not have any. So the parabola, since we're opening downwards, since our a value is negative, the parabola will start somewhere down here or here uh, and open downwards like this. Our problem is going to look something like that. So 
we will never cross the x-axis, so our profit will never be zero. Okay, so let's just go over a quick summary of what we just learned. Number one, a quadratic function can have either one, zero, one, or two zeros, uh, which can be determined either by graphing or analyzing the function, aka using the discriminant. And how do we use the discriminant? Well, the discriminant tells you uh, about the number of x-intercepts or zeros. And again, if the discriminant is greater than zero, we have two roots. Again, remembering that we are under the square root in the quadratic function, right? And our discriminant is just this. Oh, hold on. Our discriminant is just this part inside the square root. So if that part is greater than zero, we're going to have two different solutions because we have that plus or minus sign before it. Uh, if D is equal to zero, if this uh, section is equal to zero, we're only going to have one solution, one x intercept, um, because this whole thing will be zero, so it will have no effect on our answer um, of the rest of the quadratic equation. And if D is less than zero, we're going to have no solutions because if we have a negative under the uh, radical sign, it will not be possible. Okay, so we just want to remember that. And three, the vertex and direction of opening taken together can tell you about the x-intercepts. So if a is greater than zero, meaning we're opening upwards and we are above the x-axis, that means we're not, we will not have any zeros because we're opening upwards like this. If our a value is negative, that means we're opening downwards. And if we start below the x-axis, we will also not, not have any zeros. If our a value is positive or negative and we're starting uh, our, our vertex is right at the x-axis, we're only going to have one solution. Remember what I said, if our vertex is at the x-axis, that will be the only time, only scenario where we will only have one x-intercept. Any other way, we'll we will either have none or in the next example that we will go through, we'll have two. So if a is greater than zero and we're opening upwards and our vertex is below the x-axis, we're going to have two solutions. Or if our a value is negative, so we're opening downwards, and our vertex is above the x-axis. So right here, we're going to also have two solutions. Okay, so that's it for the video, guys. I hope you were able to understand everything well, and I'll see you in the next one.